doing it or yeah, I mean, just the, a good... The, the, the DNA goes into the database. All of a sudden, Bink, you get a, you get a hit on the DNA, and then you follow it to the... To the, to the um, to the conclusion, you know, just looking I, into this case, there's there's a lot of it seems a lot. There's like a lot of data out there that there isn't complete, so I, I don't yeah. know what the difference is: a motivated cop solving it or the DNA solving it. It'll be interesting to see it as it comes to trial. I, I really do. He's going to plead that he was sleepwalking. <laughs> uh, you know, I, just, I just woke up and I just fired off three rounds. I don't know. I thought in my dream I had a sparkler in my hand. It was the 4th of July. (laughs) (laughs) Is that that how he speaks? Uh, Probably. He's tired. He's he's been sleepwalking. He's been sleepwalking, yeah. I miss miss you, Nathan. (laughs) Yeah. Thanks. I want to say, speaking on behalf of both of us, that Dale misses you, Nathan. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you ever work a cold case? Yes, this 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 case right here. Well, I, I, you know the, the what we're coming up upon now is the Molly Bish famous case. Yeah, in famous. You're gonna Dave. Dave's gonna give some information on it. Then I'm gonna give some information that um, myself and another officer okay. twenty years ago. Began working on this case a little bit. But Dave, why don't you give a little background that we'll go from there. Molly Bish. Molly Bish, very sad. She's, she was missing from a place called Warren, Mass., a little town called Warren, Mass. Uh, it goes back to 2000. She was 16. Uh, there was a suspicious man seen the day before, uh, a man in a, with a mustache and a white car. And the old white car, the old, the old white, white van. It's, it's been... It's been you know, it's one of those cases that just captured the interest of the news media. Law enforcement has been has been basically trying. This is one of those cases where you think it'll eventually be solved because it is a fairly it's a high profile case, and it's it's fair to say people have been stymied. Yeah, there's there's been no less than four known suspects that law enforcement has put out there in the last twenty years. With a couple of them dying, all right, and the most recent one was a, a man by the name of Francis P. Sumner Sr., 20-page criminal record, in and out of jail. Uh, he was considered in that case over the summer. However, whatever DNA evidence they may have had, they didn't release that, but subsequently he was, he's been dead for four years, but his name came up yep. this summer as a someone they were looking at. But just for, let everyone know he's he is deceased right. at at the moment. But and, we, and I, sh- I should mention this too: uh, Molly Bish, her, her body was found a few years later. Her, it, her yeah, it was, was found a few years, years later in the woods. Yep. Um, kind of weird that someone was in the woods and they saw a like a blue a, a bathing suit. I believe it was a blue bathing suit. And then maybe a few months later, that person said, "Ah, oh, maybe I should tell someone about that." And then he told someone, and then they went out into that area, and she was found. Her remains whatever her remains were after three years were found there uh horrible out there in uh yeah warren mass out in the wood sure, oh, the body warren, was found palmer, palmer yeah. mass, i think palmer and warren are, are next they're right door, they're, they're literally they're, it's brimfield palmer and warren mass so it's 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 a, a rural area of massachusetts yeah, it's 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 kind of like the um you know the, the hillbilly section kind of like appalachia You've been out there before. <laughs> no, You've been out there before. No. Yeah, it's it's a different breed out there. It's a different it's a different mentality out there. Okay. Right, Nate. <laughs> it's just a different breed of people. If out she's there. been gone for longer than forty eight hours. Odds are the wolves got to her. This is open and shut, fellers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you how you know when that incident happened. Probably a few days after that, myself and another officer were watching the news at the station, and they threw up a person of interest, a sketch of witnesses. So they had a um, forensic artist sketch a suspect. We looked at each other, myself and that officer, we looked at each other and we said, I know that guy. That guy is a North Shore resident. He was 
dealt with for many years with the cops. He, I don't know that he necessarily had mental health issues, but he was a volatile individual who had been arrested many times. Mm-hmm. And that summer or six months up to that incident and during that time span, we had dealt with him on probably seven or eight different occasions. He would thumb in the North Shore area. He, but he had a car. He had a driver's license. He had a car. But he would park his car and just thumb throughout the North Shore. And if you didn't stop and give him a ride, he'd you know, run after your car or he'd yell at you. And he would just randomly start shit with people. So we dealt with him four or five times. But he wasn't he wasn't thumbing to rob people. He just But he would thumb. And if there was an He was issue, just an antagonistic person who would always have a problem with people so what we did was we looked at it we said my god that looks just like him so we went to the registry computer we ran his driver's license and we ran his vehicle and a week prior to molly bish going missing he received a citation for a speeding ticket in warren massachusetts so he was in that area a week prior so I spoke to a private detective friend of mine Mm -hmm. and we ran a little background on him and he has, I don't know if he still does, but at that time he had relatives in the Warren mass area. So that's why he was out there. So what we did was we put together a package of that information, his picture, his involvement, his criminal history, the fact that he had gotten a speeding ticket in that area. He didn't drive a white car. But a lot of times, you know, the car isn't yeah. necessarily relevant. Yep. It's more the, the, you know, the idea of the suspect or the person of interest. And we sent it out to the state police. They had, there was a task force at that point. And we sent them a package. We never heard back from them. So a month later, we, we called. They, they said, yeah, no, we looked into him, nothing. Now, I don't know that they did or they didn't. I think at that time, there was probably a lot of suspects, a lot of people of interest right. that people were, pouring out information on they could have been overwhelmed maybe they overlooked them maybe they did look at them yeah and but nothing but well this has got to be incredibly frustrating if you're if you're the local department and you've sent this package up and you don't have any kind of a dialogue and communication and nothing's done on your lead it's got to be frustrating for the cops involved well because you you believe you look at the picture and you say wow that looks 100 percent like this guy yeah. and then you start running in your head his past behavior. You know, like, this guy's got some issues. Doesn't mean he's going to kidnap a girl. Yeah, doesn't mean he's going to do it. Doesn't mean he's going to do that. But you have to start somewhere. And then he was in Warren, Mass. a week prior. So as you start looking at it, there's little links in the investigatory chain that start coming together. And you're like, well, maybe this guy... He might be. Someone the, Obviously, or, or someone the, did it. Or the defense attorney would say, coincidence. Yeah, coincidental. Coincidental. That's... Um, so, obviously, the, 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 the case is still active. No one has been tried for that crime. No suspect has ever been um, you know, brought to trial for that crime. So, it's still an open case. And it's kind of bizarre, but a few years prior, not even a few years, probably seven years prior to that, a young girl, Holly... Perainen, she was a ten year old girl, and uh, she was she was murdered, and her body was was found kind of in that same little yeah. area, and her her case is, uh, has never been been solved either. Yeah, and it's the same kind of a scratch. Um. Just like she went to visit her grandparents, and they went to visit some you know to see the puppies, and the little brother returned home, and she didn't return home, and they found like her sneaker in, in the woods, and and then they found her her body. Um, in Brimfield, Massachusetts, like I said, Brimfield, yeah. Warren, and Palmer—they all kind of connect with each other. Is yeah, it's, it's western part of Massachusetts, probably uh, sixty-eight point five miles from Boston. Okay. I, I, I map quest it. I, I map probably, quest it. Probably about sixty-eight point five. <laughs> could have been sixty-eight point four. Could have been sixty-eight point six. Yeah, it's about an hour west of Boston, Massachusetts. That's got to be such a. That's got to be the worst thing in the world for the parents of the kid and the brothers and the sisters just to not know. You know, not know a to not know and b for the for the killer to have um, not to have been brought to justice. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think that's one of the things about cold cases is that they, you know, they bring closure, they capture the bad, you know, they make the bad guy pay, they make society feel safer. Well, the real yeah. the bad news about a cold case, David, this probably let's just say in the last let's just say in the last thirty years, there's probably a hundred cold case murders that are still open in Massachusetts. You want to know what it means? 
what that means to you and Nathan over here? Yeah. There's a hundred murderers out there it's, still who, it's who still, still could murder someone. I got Nathan over there shaking in his boots. That was, Nathan, you're nervous about that? It looks There's a hundred like, murderers out there, looks, Nathan. It looks like he's planning. No, no. It just means they aren't going to catch me as soon as I thought they would. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to something else. This is, uh, again, this is a sad thing. So we um, will we'll treat this completely completely uh, incorrectly. This is just amazing to me. I mean, this is uh, very sad. Very sad that this uh, person died. Uh, Karen Karen Hilton Brown. Died. It's a male. I think it's Karan. A oh, Karan. Okay. Yeah, Karan, it's a male. Karan Hilton Brown. He's driving a moped, and the cops want to pull him over. He does not want to pull over for the cops, and so he decides he's going to try to. Uh, is he trying to evade him, or is he just trying? He's to only going. Him he's only going thirty moped. miles an hour. Yeah. So why it's doesn't he pull over? Why doesn't he pull over? What's just thinking? Well, you know, we've, most departments have a policy, and I, I know D.C., Washington, D.C. has a policy that you don't pursue a mo- mo- the motor vehicle chases nowadays, but most departments even are more specific. You don't pursue mopeds and motorcycles because the amount of pursuits that end up in the a risk. fatality yep. Yep. With, with a motorcycle yep. is very high. And that's what happened in this one. The guy dies. And now the cop who pursued him, 37-year-old cop, 10-year police veteran, charged with second-degree murder, conspiracy, and obstruction of justice. Uh, his lieutenant, uh, Andrew Zavat, Zavat, whatever. Let me see. Zababski. 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 That's why we pronounce every syllable in law enforcement. <laughs> Is that why you pronounce <laughs> yeah, every, Absolutely. I think you should pronounce these names from now on. <laughs> Uh, or I could read the notes uh, more more thoroughly before we start. Anyway, so the second degree murder charge against this cop, uh, his lieutenant, I guess, is charged. It looks like with covering up for him. You know, forty five years for Sutton if he's convicted on both. I'm sorry, sixty five years, uh, five years for the uh, for the conspiracy and twenty for obstruction of justice. Uh, it's a witch hunt. It's like the title that we have here is um, witch hunt. Well, before we go to witch hunt, let's just talk about how crazy this is. Here's the, here's the thing about this. I knew a guy. Well, let's put it this way. I knew a guy who got himself in trouble, cop, and he got himself in more trouble because he said he was on the job and he wasn't. Yep. And that's obstruction of justice. And so uh, getting and conspiracy was when. I decide to do something and I drag you in and you go along with me because I'm your buddy. Yeah, and now cons- we're both- yeah, conspiracy is they, they they hatched up some sort of a plan to to maybe yeah. to be evasive toward the investigators and give them a different story. So a lot of times with a conspiracy, you don't there's you me and you could sit in front of a bank, right. conspire to rob the bank, yeah. and the FBI is listening to us all the time, and we're gonna get arrested for conspiracy to rob a bank, which is I think conspiracy to commit a crime is the same as committing the crime. I think that okay. if, if it's 10 years, it's the same for conspiracy. Okay. So you might as well just rob the bank, Dave, get some money. I know. But, but, the, but in this case, it's just you screw up in the job, or, or this, in this case, this uh, Terrence Sutton screwed up in the job. He chased somebody when he shouldn't have. Bad, you know, bad, bad error in judgment. Oh, what's he thinking? It's just a knucklehead, goofy kid on a motorcycle playing chicken with the cops. The cop's ego got control of him. He didn't want to lose, so Mm -hmm. he kept on following the kid. The cop probably knows the neighborhood. He probably knows these little back alleys. All all cops know bad intersections, Yep. and he just followed the kid, and the kid kept on going and going and going and going, and I think that's where they're trying to say the murder. You just kept on pushing this kid right. to keep driving and at some point the kid drove right into a car yeah that's that's i mean is is that murder it's not what you think you know murder is more you, you know you, you stab your wife to death or you shoot someone in the head that's murder right i don't think it's murder but they're going to charge him for murder because they'll probably plea bargain down to like manslaughter right i didn't know i was following the car i was i was sleep driving at the time <laughs> oh is that the I, cops defense i didn't i didn't know i was chasing a moped i just i woke up and i'm like oh shit and crashed a moped <laughs> I was having such a lovely dream behind the wheel of my car. Now, now do you know this? These guys were both on the scene. The, the, the officer and the lieutenant were both on the scene. It appears from this that the officer was the one, uh, let's say, encouraging the moped driver to ride. Uh, and the lieutenant just kind of, it looked like, it seems like the lieutenant was either, I don't know, second in the car. I mean, he was, yeah, he was, he, 
Yeah, most lieutenants don't drive on the street in, in a lot of departments, but obviously in, D, in, in D.C., they probably do. Okay. Are they two in a car or is it separate cars? Yeah, you they, 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 yeah that didn't really... 